Welcome to the Men of Integrity, Men That Rescue Men and Women. And we are so delighted that you've joined us again for a journey through the Word of God. It is without question that God has been blessing us. And by your testimonies in the supermarket, we find out that He has been blessing you through this broadcast. I want to speak to you tonight on the behalf of the KPLE television station. And the KPLE television station certainly wants to thank you for your support over the years as they have stood beside many churches in the spiritual warfare and helping to get the Word of God out to many of those that are less fortunate than you and I where they're able to get to the sanctuary. But those that have been blessed by being in nursing homes and jail institutions and these type places, KPLE has been getting the Word to them for over 25 years. KPLE is a 501c3 nonprofit organization. And at this particular time, we need you to join forces with the KPLE TV station. We need you to sow some seeds of faith mm -hmm. so that we can continue to do such a great work that is needed in these last and evil days. Donations to this station will help keep Christian television alive and well in Central Texas. As a special thanks to you, the churches that will donate $100 or more, we want you to know that we will list you on KPLE webpage as a friend, announce your church as a friend of the KPLE on the air once a day for the next month, and thank your church for being a friend of the KPLE on the Facebook page. Besides that, what is more important is that you will be sowing into the life of someone that will be empowered by the gospel of Jesus Christ. So I'm asking you that you would help us and join us as we are building the kingdom of God. Sow that seed of faith. It's one thing to pray. It's another thing to give good words, but it's another thing when you release that seed of faith that others are blessed by the word of God. You brothers want to share anything as it relates to, to this that I'm speaking about right now before we get into the word of God? Uh, we're talking about souls um, being um, the work of the kingdom of God and what kind of value can you place on a soul? So we're asking you to sow that seed and to help KPLE, not only this program, but many other programs that KPLE is putting on um, that uh, has been a blessing to you. Sow that seed of faith. Uh, I, I guarantee you that this is good ground and you will receive a return, not only in uh, this time, but in eternity. Amen. Yeah. And I would like to just echo what Apostle said, Bishop, that it's so important that we give and so this is good ground and I believe KPL's uh, harvest qualified in that there's a great net mm -hmm. to bring in the harvest. So we want to keep that in place, keep that in position, and we're asking you to please sacrifice and give a seed uh, that will keep us on the air. Tonight, Bishop, our scripture is coming out of Matthew chapter 6 and verse number 33. And it says, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. We're talking to you tonight, living by the laws of the kingdom. And one of the laws of the kingdom is found in Luke 6 and 38. Mm -hmm. It says, Give, yes. and it shall be given unto you a good measure pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Mm -hmm. The part that I believe most people miss is the very fact that it says, for with the same measure mm -hmm. that you meet, it shall be measured to you again. So tonight, even in the laws of the kingdom, living the laws of the kingdom, it is our responsibility to share and meet the needs of one another. The scripture shows that this subject should be on our minds after all, we're supposed to pray for the kingdom of God to come. Mm -hmm. Jesus told us to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Mm -hmm. That simply means to me, and I want you to weigh in on this right here, righteousness is to do what you know is right mm -hmm. at the time that it is needed. 
-hmm. Let's launch in right there. I believe you're right on point, uh, Bishop, and to do exactly what is right. And I think a part of that is discipline because discipline is enforced obedience. The scripture says for a man that knoweth to do right and doeth not, to him it's a sin. So again, to know is not necessarily to do. So then it's called enforced obedience. We got to do what is right when it's time to do what is right. Absolutely. Yes. And you know, um, it says righteousness exalted a nation. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. But sinners are mm. reproached to any people and, and um, God has come to um, share with us his righteous standing so that we would walk in them and of course uh, in our righteousness a man that lives right will be blessed in all of his deeds. Yeah. The scripture says that he that knoweth to do good mm -hmm. and do it not to him it, it is sin. sin. Mm -hmm. okay? And so we're looking for God to increase us, to enlarge us, to cause us to have all of the great sufficiencies that comes by his awesome grace. Yeah. But we cannot be one that collects. Sometimes we have to be the one that distributes. Yeah. Yeah, amen. All right. Okay. Sometimes yeah. you got to pray for some people. Sometimes yeah. you got to yeah. forgive some people. Sometimes yeah. you got to love some people. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you have to give to people. Yeah. Even out of your necessity, when you give, then God allows the kingdom principles and the blessings yeah. to come up go in your life. Let's right. weigh in on that. Right. I believe you um, is so right, Bishop. I, when, when I hear the word give, really it defines God. Uh, John 3.16 said, For God so loved the world that he gave. And that is really the only way you can define love. Mm -hmm. It's a, Love is a four-letter word. It takes a four-letter word to, to define it, and that is uh, give. And again, that is, I think, where we have to enforce again that obedience to do, to be the distributor, like you said, to give because it, it's easier for us to receive. But again, to give, to be like God, to sacrifice and to meet another need. Absolutely. Yeah, and you know, uh, um, Paul picks up on the revelation that uh, it's more blessed to give, give yeah. than to receive. You know, we all like to receive, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but it's more blessed to give. That's the that's the law of the kingdom. That's the principle of the kingdom. So if we want to get into uh, align with the kingdom, we yeah. got to become givers because even our father so loved the world that he, he gave. Gave. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. See? When we repent of our sins and are baptized and begin following the lead of the Holy Spirit, we voluntarily place ourselves under the laws and authority of the coming kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Describing this process, Paul, who was being held prisoner in Rome at the time, explained, He, God the Father, has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed unto us the kingdom of his Son of love, Colossians 1 and 13. So there, in a sense of being symbolically conveyed, translated in the King James Version, or transferred in the English Standard Version into the kingdom, we commit our lives to God and begin living as he instructs us. Mm -hmm. Now, what are the instructions as it relates to God when it comes to kingdom laws? Mm -hmm. okay? We know we have to live free from sin, mm -hmm. but then what else is our duty, okay, as it relates to the laws of the kingdom. Let's weigh in on that. Well, I think the first thing is one of the, the greatest laws is obedience. And obedience is what really defines our faith. Obedience really is the evidence of, of our faith. And also obedience really is a pivoting factor, Bishop, of our, our discipleship. The only reason we are disciples of Christ is that we've come into a place of obedience. And that is the, I believe that is the power point of everything, alignment as we talked in the last session, alignment and agreement, coming in obedience so that we can align, as Apostle said, we can align ourselves with the kingdom of God mm -hmm. and walk in the laws and the principles. To me, Bishop, I think that when I think I hear this, I hear protocol, I hear order. Mm -hmm. And so the laws of the kingdom sets us in order to operate the way God wants us to operate in the earth realm. But again, it takes a discipline to do that because this flesh, it, it ain't going to line up with the spiritual principles. It ain't going to want to line up with the laws. So we got to make do. We got to operate on a discipline to do that. Let mm -hmm. me throw this in. He says, our primary allegiance is transferred from all kingdoms of the world to the kingdom of God. So our allegiance must be to whatever is commanded mm -hmm. of the kingdom of God. Yeah. Uh, you know, First John, uh, the third chapter, tells mm -hmm. us, they say, here's your duty 
to believe on the name of Jesus Christ and keep his commandments. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. The Holy Spirit helps us obey God's laws, the spirit of power and of love and of a sound mind, which is 2 Timothy 1 and 7, gives us the ability to live by God's laws even though we are still human with human weaknesses. We got to put a little weight on this. The spirit of power and of love and of a sound um, mind. Let's yeah. deal with that right quick. Well, that's Second Timothy. You quote in Second Timothy 1, 7, the bishop, where God said he have not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Again, I believe that's the, that's the operation of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost operating in our lives, but that requires a submission. Most of the time when you hear the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit, most people have ruled him out because they don't know how to come in agreement with him mm -hmm. or how to line up with him. But again, that comes through the submission mission of the Word of God, yes. the written Word of God, because John 7, 37 said, if I will believe on him as the scripture, scripture. have said. Yes. So the Word of God bring me in line with the Spirit of God as a child of God. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And you know, operating, the Spirit of God is operating in our spirit, mm -hmm. and that's why the Bible says, walk in the Spirit, mm -hmm. and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Mm -hmm. uh, we are weak in the flesh. But that's why God has born us again and given us a running start where instead of living to the flesh, we'll live to the spirit and therefore we can do the things that God is calling yeah. us to do. Mm. Mm -hmm. So Romans 8 and 14 says, those who are led by the Spirit of right. God, mm -hmm. they are called the sons of God. Yes. Mm -hmm. And this same Spirit empowers the church to fulfill its commission. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, on the day of Pentecost, in Acts chapter 2, around the verses 41, 42, and 43, mm -hmm. it says that they continue steadfast in the apostles' doctrine. Mm -hmm. Okay. And they went from house to house breaking bread. Yeah. Okay. And then they had all things common. It was because they were practicing kingdom, kingdom principles. principles. Right. Yes. They were giving. They, they mm -hmm. were sharing. Yeah. They were making sure that everyone's need is met. Okay? Mm -hmm. The mm -hmm. question that I want to ask you tonight, is your needs the only needs being met? Mm. Does everything have to be your way? Okay? Mm. Do you have to be the only one that is satisfied? And if you're not satisfied and everything else is in disarray, mm -hmm. well, that's not kingdom principles and neither is that the ways of God. Mm -hmm. So let's put a little bit more weight on these laws and principles of God. I think, Bishop, one of the things that came out uh, right when you were just talking is that it points to sometimes spiritual immaturity because when you hear me and my and I and what I want and what I desire, you hear, you know, a degree of selfishness, but, you know, immaturity, spiritual immaturity will always points to selfishness. I want to look out for me first. I don't know how to sacrifice. We know even in the natural, as we grow up, we understand responsibility. But as a child, oftentimes you have to train children and teach them to share. You got to teach them to give. You got to teach them to behave. You got to teach them to reconcile and to forgive. But when we mature, see, the Bible says that we got to grow in grace and in the knowledge of him. We got to grow up in Christ, in the full stature of Christ. And I think that's what the Holy Ghost comes to do is to chaperone us in God, to show us and again, allow us to explore the vastness of God. We got to grow up in the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. Let me ask this question. Is your church suffering because of your selfishness? Good question. Is, is, is your ministry suffering because you won't give your time, your talent, and your treasure? Mm. Does the house of God suffer because we do yeah. not really practice the kingdom principles? Mm -hmm. Weigh in on that a little bit. Well, you know, um, it does. Uh, the church does suffer. We can easily criticize the church but what about the re resolution that we can provide ourselves, mm -hmm. our time, uh, our talents, uh, our prayers, yes. our participation? Uh, uh, we need to do everything that we can uh, to make sure that the church does not go lacking. Yes. And um, uh, and certainly God will bless us for that. And then of course it will be a benefit to us because if our church is doing well and we're part of the church, we're doing well too. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Then the question would rise then, if there were no gospel television, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. there were no gospel radio stations, how many people would really begin to fall into darkness? Yeah. And how do we combat that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, again, Bishop, I, um, I look at the Great Commission. 
And I believe KPLE, for an example, is fulfilling that. They're great commissions. Go ye therefore. How else can we go into the outermost parts? Mm -hmm. You know, and this is a great instrument to be able to do that. But again, uh, back to spiritual immaturity, if a believer does not understand evangelism, they will not have a heart to keep television or radio on the air in the sense of the gospel because they're immature and so I become selfish. All I want to do is I want God to bless me. I'm not worried about another soul being saved. I'm not worried about nobody that's incarcerated. We tend to feel that, okay, if they're incarcerated, that's their fault. But again, the Jesus said, listen, when, you, when I was in jail, when I was in prison, mm -hmm. you didn't even see about me. Yeah, when I was right. in the hospital, when I was sick, when I was hungry, when I was naked, you didn't close me. So I believe that our responsibility comes back to that place of spiritual maturity, allowing the Holy Ghost to lead us and to chaperone us into the needs of the kingdom. Mm -hmm. Wow. Well, you know, we, we may not be able to go in all of those places, but our support yes. and our money yeah. can put us into those places and those people that can go, we can support them like KPLE. Uh, we can't go everywhere that KPLE can go, but with our support yes. and our money and our time and our participation, we can help and reach into there um, through the personnel and through the uh, equipment um, that can do those things for us. So the same spirit mm -hmm. empowers the church to fulfill its mission. The same spirit that leads the sons of God. Mm -hmm. The same spirit that shouts us and gives us the exuberant praise. Mm -hmm. It also causes us to fulfill the commission of the church, mm -hmm. and that is to get the gospel yes. to every unbeliever. Yeah. I keep flashing in my mind, what would it be like if churches start closing down yeah. because they're not <clears throat> having the sufficiency to keep them going? Mm -hmm. Where would people go yeah. to hear the gospel? I, I, I've raised this question a lot in, in some of my classes that I teach. You can go to college and learn how to be a cook or a mechanic or a welder, okay? mm -hmm. doctor, lawyer, but they don't teach you in college the principles of life. Yeah. There's only one place that you could go to learn how to live, yeah. and that's to the house of God. That's yeah. right, okay? that's right. That's the right. only place that empowers you for successful living is the house of God. And if yeah. the gospel be hid, it. Okay? Mm -hmm. Paul says it is hid, hid from who? Them Those which are lost. Yeah. Are you receiving the gospel message tonight? Just think tonight that this word that you're hearing is empowering mm -hmm. your life. Just think if it were not possible for you to hear that word tonight, then what? Yeah. Okay? You would probably find resources somewhere else, but you're getting it right now in yeah. power. So we need to lock into the kingdom mm. laws and kingdom principles of God. Let me put this on you and let's discuss that. In the sense we have the opportunity to taste or experience the power of the ages to come, Hebrews mm -hmm. 6, 4, and 5. Right. Mm -hmm. What is he talking about when he's talking about tasting the powers of the world to come? Well, I think, um, you know, as David said, oh, taste and see. And again, that is drawn into, I believe it's a divine invitation from God to experience him and yeah. to experience his power. And Bishop, I believe that's what God is actually saying to his people in this hour. And that in this message tonight, I believe is awakening something in people that is viewing right now. That again, the supernatural power of God being awakening in them that they can do more than they ever imagined. Wow. Mm -hmm. Let's take a moment and pray that prayer. Yeah. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray right now, even for every viewer, every home right now, every church, every ministry yes, that's represented, even KPLE. Yes. Father, I thank you right now for the explosion power of the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. And Father, that everyone is being awakened and right now in yes. their spirit man yes. as they hear the word of God. Yes. And God, we give you glory that the impossible now have become possible to us. Yes. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. It goes back to the scripture text in Matthew 6 and 33. Yes. Seek first the kingdom of God mm -hmm. yeah. and its righteousness. Mm -hmm. And then all these other things shall be added, added unto you. Mm -hmm. I want to ask you a question tonight. Have you heard from God lately? Oh, God. What has God said mm. for you to do? And it, whatever God says to do, you're going to find them in the kingdom laws and the kingdom principles of God. Yes. Okay? So how does God define the laws of God? The question is of great importance for it deals with our spiritual understanding. Mm -hmm. okay? Let's talk about this here. Why do people have a problem understanding 
what God is saying in the Word of God. It's got to be a simple solution. Well, I want to say this, Bishop, and it just really comes to me when you hear the laws of the kingdom. I think one of our greatest mistakes is the laws are spiritual. Yes. Just like we have natural laws set up to operate in the earth realm, there are spiritual laws that are set up for us to operate in the spiritual realm. Yes. So we tend to have lived so long in the natural that when we come to the spiritual, we think the same principle apply, yes. and they don't. That's like going from the U.S. to Germany and trying to drive the same. Yes. No, it's a different law because we're in a different kingdom. Yes. And so I believe that that is one of the things we have to learn to do is get back to the place of understanding doctrine, understanding the laws, and to be taught the Word of God. Yeah, and you know, um, just, just as our text said, seek ye first the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. Well, the Bible tells us in Romans 14 uh, and 17, it says um, mm -hmm. the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. Yes. Mm -hmm. First Corinthians 4 and 20 tells us that the kingdom of God is not in word, but mm -hmm. in power. So mm -hmm. we must seek, when we're seeking the kingdom of God, we're seeking that power from God. Jesus yeah. was emphatically clear about um, uh, his last message to the disciples and he said, uh, tarry till you be endured with power yeah. from on high because yeah. the works that I want you to do is the same works that I did and you're only going to be able to do it through the power of the Holy Ghost. Yeah. You see, uh, absolutely, it's a spiritual experience. There you go. There you and go. you have to ask yourself, yeah. am I in position? I made mm. this statement the other night in Bible study. Is it possible that where you are spiritually, there is no money? Oh, yes. Yeah. Your spiritual level of where you are can mm -hmm. produce no fruit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Until you move to another dimension, another level in God as it relates to understanding and walking out kingdom principles, yeah. then there's nothing here but desolate and, and powerless okay, and poverty. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But when you move to another place, yeah. you move into the place of prosperity. Okay. Yeah. And that's the kingdom principle, okay? I see something jumping off you, Bishop. Let me put this out there. <laughs> God's laws are the rules of the kingdom of God and his way of life. Mm -hmm. And they are divine and perfect intent, okay? To give you equality, okay, and administration. Mm -hmm. Well, Bishop, what, what really was just coming to me is that, you know, God sets things up as apostles say, went back to Matthew 6, But Joshua said, if I will meditate, Mm -hmm. on this law day and night and mm -hmm. that his word would not depart from my mouth. Mm -hmm. He tell me the type of success that I will have. You mm -hmm. said something that could we be in a place where possibly that there's a level of poverty there but it's cause of our spiritual condition. Yes. I believe that Bishop that the spiritual dictates the natural. I believe that we got to get things in order spiritually in order to change things naturally. Yes, right. And I believe even when we're born again we're born again. That's dealing with the spirit man. Mm -hmm. And so I believe exactly what you're sharing right now a person can possibly in a place, just like Abraham went to a place called Haran. Mm -hmm. Again, that place in the Hebrew means a parsh, dry place. Mm -hmm. You can't plant nothing there. You yes. know? And so we got to learn how to follow the lead of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, according to Romans 8, 14. Mm -hmm. And you know, uh, it, uh, Jesus was talking about the Spirit. He says, he says, now if you're full of light, Mm -hmm. Good. You understand what I'm saying? Then, uh, then everything will be full of light in your life. Mm -hmm. But now if you're full of darkness, yeah. and it could be, you know, you have to check yourself, and that's why the Bible says examine yourself. Mm -hmm. See if you're in the faith. Yes. Yeah. If we're really in the faith, it will be just like this Bible says, prosperity and good yeah. success. Alignment. But when we're yeah. out of the will of God and out of the place of God, we're going to be full of darkness. Yeah. Jude says, contend for the faith there you go. Mm. that was once delivered unto the saints. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's getting into those parameters by which God does what he does. Mm -hmm. Is it possible that you're frustrated, you're full of anxiety, mm. you're doing all kind of tricks to kind of make ends meet, mm. rather than aligning yourself with the principles of God's yeah. kingdom? Right. Maybe it's time to repent again. 
Yeah. Maybe it's time to ask God <laughs> to fill you with the Holy Spirit yeah. again. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe it's time to be baptized again mm -hmm. so that you can realign yourself with the things of God because this thing does work. Oh, oh yes. yes. Oh, yes. It does work. And right. if it's not working, then the problem is not with God. The Come problem yeah. is Come with on. us. Come on now. Yeah. Okay. Come on now. Yeah. Yeah. I just want to say that, Bishop, it works. The principles of God work, and especially giving. And, um, and I just want to say that to the people tonight that that is a principle that can break the back of poverty yes. off your life and off the generation mm -hmm. to come. Mm -hmm. I'm a living example. I'm a walking testimony of what the power of giving can do and change things. Even throughout the scripture, you know, even we see Isaac, he sold in the time of famine when he yes. didn't have. It didn't make sense. See, because that is a spiritual principle. Yes. It don't make sense in the natural to give when you're in need. Yes. Mm -hmm. But see, God, mm -hmm. just like the widow woman, just like the mule barrel, he will have you to do, so. you're about to die, but he said, give your last to the kingdom All right. and you will eat forever. You'll never live. Wow. Yeah, that is so awesome and so powerful, amen, that we can really lunch from that giving out of your yeah. need. Mm -hmm. yes. You know, even yes. though you have a need, God says give. And yeah. then he says, and it shall be given it shall be unto given. you. Right. You can't do nothing with the crumbs and the yeah. pennies that you have anyway. It's not Give enough to, to do anything Give with. It to so you might as well sow it. Yeah. That's right. That, that would be a return on yeah. what it is that you want to sow. You want to say something? Yeah, quickly? let me add to what he said. You know, Jesus one day was watching the treasurer. Because oh, yeah, he yeah, is, yeah. And he is the treasurer of heaven yeah. anyway. And he was sitting there watching. He watching people throw in this and throw in that. But when he saw that lady give that pence out of her need, yeah. see what I'm saying? He said he, he commended her. He didn't commend those other folks. He commended her. Yes. And so we got to learn to give out of our, that's when it really yes. prospers, when we give out of our need and our living, then God sees that because that's, that's our energy, that's our skill, that's mm. our talent, that might yes. even be our last. Yes. Absolutely. I want to say to you tonight that kingdom laws are great. Mm -hmm. Kingdom principles mm. are necessary. All right. And it is not until we begin to operate Come on within now. the principles and the kingdom of God do you really see the blessings that is really needed for your life. Mm -hmm. You need more, and God want to give you more. Yeah. But in order to get more, you have to give. All right. Yeah. And so we're soliciting you. We're not begging. David said, I was young, but now I'm old. Yeah. And I've never, never seen, seen the righteous forsaken, Neither. nor his seed begging, begging bread. bread. Mm -hmm. I want to say to you tonight that we're asking you to sow some seeds to help continue to get the gospel, not just this show, but all gospel shows that come through the KPLE television yes, station. Yes, this yeah, ministry yeah. of KPLE needs your support now. You've been blessed, you've been empowered through this television station. Now tonight, write that check. I don't know what your financial ability is, but you're able to write a check to help meet the need that God has spoken of tonight. Mm. This is Bishop Shaw, and I'm praying for your miracle. Out of your bed, out of your, 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 out